Hello, welcome. My name is Michelle Freeman. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, this class, we're going to dive right into it. It's going to be a pretty short, little, very but very full morning yoga practice. So, of course, you could do this any time of day, but the idea around this practice is to kind of wake up your body, to mobilize some of your joints, to wake up your core, to get those juices flowing. So, that's what we're up to. All right. So, if you're going to join me today, the only equipment you're going to need is a yoga mat or something like it so that you have some cushioning underneath your knees and all of that and let's go ahead and get started right away so <clears throat> just gonna come on to our mats and find a comfortable seated position so if it's uncomfortable to sit cross-legged for example if your knees are a little higher than your hips you may want to actually have a little cushion off your couch or a yoga block to sit on something like that but whenever you're ready just finding that comfortable cross-legged position resting the hands palms facing down towards the knees we'll just take a moment to close the eyes and right away just start to connect into your breath deep breath in starting to fill up your lungs big breath out let the shoulders drop as you exhale once again, big breath in, filling up the lungs side to side and front to back. Big breath out, shoulders melt down the back. Now we'll start to link some movements together with the breath, opening up the eyes. Let's float the arms up towards the sky. Nice big inhale as we reach up. And exhale, just flowing the arms down. Twice more like that. Inhale, sweeping the arms up. Front ribs drawing in and exhale, the arms float down. One more time, inhale. And exhale. This time we're going to take it over to the right side. So we'll just plant that right hand down, reach up through the left arm, big inhale to stretch up. And then exhale, just slowly side bend over to that right side. You can gaze up towards the ceiling or you can just look at a neutral gaze in front of you. And just try and keep that left sitting bone grounded on the mat. Okay, one more deep breath in. And a big breath out. <laughs> Very nice. Inhale all the way up. Very slow over to the other side as we exhale. Now I'm going to recommend this first round. We're going to repeat this one a couple of times. You stay a little bit lifted just for now. Keep that right sitting bone grounded. Soften the gaze. Breathing in and out through your nose. Okay, let's flow a little bit in and out of this position. So we'll inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, dropping to the right. Coming right back up now. Inhale, up, nice and tall. And exhale, flowing to that left side. One more time on each side, we'll hold again. So inhaling over to the right, just pausing here, three breaths. Now, if you're feeling comfortable, you're welcome to drop that forearm down to the floor. Just make sure your left hip didn't go with it. So keep that hip down. For myself, I'm just gonna stay a little bit more lifted so I can really ground that left hip down. Just take one more big breath. And the out breath. We'll move on the in. So inhale all the way up. And one more time over to that left hand side. Again, feel welcome to go a little bit deeper. Or maybe you're going to stay a bit lifted like me today. For one, deep breaths. Two. And three, very nice. Inhale all the way up. Just bringing the fingertips to the floor behind us, fingers pointing forward. Flatten the palms down, and nice big inhale, lifting the chest, lifting the gaze, just puffing up the heart. And exhale, coming back to center. All right, let's come around to tabletop position. So we'll flick our feet back behind us. Set the wrists and the hands right underneath the shoulders. And on a deep breath in, starting to lift the gaze, tilt the hips up and back, lowering the belly button a little bit closer to the floor, what we call happy cow position. And now exhale to angry cat. Think of lifting your belly button in towards the spine, front ribs in. Again, inhale, slowly lift the heart, lift the gaze, peel the chest open. Exhale, rounding the spine, squeeze the belly button up to the spine. One more time, inhale. And exhale, pushing the floor away, curling the tail between the legs. 
Inhale, coming back to neutral. And this time we'll walk the hands a little bit forward. We're gonna just simply lower down to the belly, warming up our backs. Let's just stack the right hand on top of the left hand, and we'll place our forehead just down on those hands. And now separate the feet about hip width apart, point the toes, activate the thighs. Gently drop the tailbone down in the direction of the feet. So you'll feel when you do that, you start to press the front of the pelvis a little bit into the mat. It starts to engage your core. Keeping that, we're going to keep the hands glued to the forehead and inhale, lift the hands and the chest and head off the floor. And exhale, drop it back down. Three of these. So inhale, do you rise up. Exhale, lowering down. Try to move slowly. One more. Inhale. And exhale, releasing those hands. Take them behind your back, interlacing the fingers. Start to stretch the fist of your hands towards your feet. If you're unable to interlace the fingers, it would be fine just to take the arms out nice and wide. When you're ready, inhale, start to slowly peel the chest open. Keep the chin slightly neutral so the neck is long. And if you have your hands interlaced, reach the fist of your hands back towards your feet and away from your bottom. Draw the belly button a little bit into the spine. Feel that you're moving from your center. One more big breath in. And on the out breath, just releasing the hands under the shoulders. Press all the way back to child's pose. So we'll bring the big toes together, knees just slightly apart. Sink the hips back to the heels, stretching the arms forward. Allow the forehead just to mesh down to the earth. And just relaxing in this position as much as possible. If your heels, or sorry, if your hips are a little bit off your heels, it would be okay. I'm showing here in the in the screen just to modify a little bit. So just dropping the hips back as far as what you can do is fine. One more big breath. Shoulders dropping down the back. And now pressing down to rise, inhale. We'll open the feet, tuck the toes, and lift the knees off the floor to come into downward facing dog position. Now, if you're familiar with this one, go ahead and just pedal out your feet a few times. If you're a little bit newer to it, feel free to have a look at the video. I'm going to try to create this upside down V shape. So your hips are lifting up to the sky, spine is long. And once you get that, pedal out the feet a couple of times. So just start to work into the back of the legs. Okay, let's come back into center, spreading out the toes, lengthening the arms, breathing in. Just stay here for a moment. Fill up your back ribs with your breath. And as you exhale, I want you to push your hands down and forward and lift your sitting bones that little bit higher. So it's almost a little pulsation we create. One more time. Inhale, pull the belly in, fill up the back ribs. Exhale, press the hips back as the belly button hugs towards the spine. One more, inhale, filling up the back body. Exhale, lift the hips, lengthen the spine. Beautiful, from here, inhale, high on the tippy toes. Exhale, tiptoe forward to the hands, ragdoll position. Feet about hip width apart, slightly bend the knees. Just cup opposite elbows and go ahead and just sway right to left if your back is comfortable with that. Nice pose to really gently release tension in the lower back and tension through the back of the legs. If you're wanting an extra challenge, you can start to straighten the legs a little bit more. You'll just feel that start to lengthen the back of the legs. Let's come back into center, releasing the hands down to the earth and pulling the belly in. Scoop the tailbone under, inhale, roll up to stand really, really slowly and mindfully. When you get to neutral, raise the shoulders up around the ears, nice big shoulder shrug, drop them down. And then with your inhale, do that again. Inhale, lifting the shoulders up, 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 and then exhale, circle them back. Good. Let's come into Sura Namaskar. We'll just do one of these. So bringing the big toes together, fan out the rest of the toes. Just take a moment to shift your weight forward and back for a second, and then find the center point. Find that place where your weight is evenly balanced. Drop through the muscles of the thighs. Drop the tailbone a little bit to the earth. Pull the belly and the front ribs in. Lift your heart. So there's a little bit of engagement in this posture. Samasitihi equals standing pose. Sura Namaskar A. On your inhale breath, reach your arms up to the sky. Belly and ribs in as you lift the gaze towards the palms. Exhale. Fold all the way forward. Belly to the thighs. Face towards the shins. Feel welcome to bend the knees a little if you need to. 
Inhale, find a halfway lift. So again, welcome to bend the knees. Try to really lengthen the chest forward. And exhale, plant the hands, step back one foot at a time to plank position. We'll pause for the breath in. Chaturanga or modified charanga, chaturanga like I'm doing today. Drop the knees and then slowly lower with control. And then we'll come into cobra for this first big back bend. Point the toes, keep the hands hugging back towards the heels and inhale. Slowly peel the chest forward. Exhale all the way back, downward facing dog position. Just one big breath in. Pressing the thighs back and a big breath out. One more like that, inhale. Filling up the back body with the breath. Exhale, lengthen the waist. Beautiful, then lifting up on the toes, lift the gaze and tiptoe one foot at a time, all the way forward to the hands. Inhale, halfway lift, roots of the big toes touching. Exhale, deep bow, squeeze the ribs to the thighs. And now rising all the way up, inhale, sweep the arms up skywards. Exhale, we'll bring the hands all the way down center and relax them by the side. Let's repeat that just one more time. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, folding forward. Take your time now, don't be in a rush. Inhale, half lift, belly is in, heart lifts. Exhale, step back, try and step the other foot back than what you did last time. Find plank pose, so front ribs in, belly and legs strong. And then chaturanga, maybe you're modifying today, dropping the knees first to control that descent. Inhale, cobra position, lifting the heart. Exhale, downward facing dog. Again, deep breaths, twice here. One, spread the fingers root down through the index knuckles and thumb mounds. And two, pulling the belly and ribs in, lift your gaze, lift up on the toes and tiptoe lightly forward to the hands. Again, big toe mounds touch, we inhale, lift the gaze, lift the heart forward. And then exhale, close the gap between the belly and the thighs as you fold. Press down to rise, inhale, sweeping the arms. Exhale, hands down center and all the way by the side. Beautiful work. We'll start to build a standing flow now. So let's come into a little squatting position, bending the knees, sink the hips down. See if you can reach the fingers to the floor. And then inhale, breath, arms sweep up nice and high, lifting the heart and the back ribs up. Exhale, fold all the way forward, squeezing into your legs. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step, or if you'd like to, you can jump back to pop high plank, and then lowering down, chaturanga. This time, we'll add on an option for upward facing dog. So otherwise sticking with your cobra, but if you're up for the upward dog, straight arms lifting the heart back ribs forward, knees and thighs off the floor. Exhale, all the way back, downward facing dog position. Now, we're gonna keep our left foot really grounded and start to pick the right foot slowly off the floor. Inhale and sweep the right leg back behind you, almost like your foot was a paintbrush and you're painting the air behind you. And go ahead and step your right foot all the way forward inside the right thumb. We'll sink our left knee down to the ground. Press into your knee and your front foot. Inhale, stretch the arms up to the sky. Exhale, hands come to the heart. We'll shift halfway forward, come into a little twist, a modified spine twist here. So hooking your left elbow across the knee, press the top hand into the bottom hand, and now lift up through the waist length and start to lift the gaze to the right. For now, we'll just keep that bottom knee down on the ground, but try and keep sending your hips down and forward. Two more breaths, shoulders down, away from the neck. Good, and one more. Softening the face. Nice work. Let's inhale, come back to center. Exhale, hands to the floor, lift the back knee. And stepping back simply to downward facing dog position. Pause here as you connect with the breath in. Big breath out. Now shifting the weight to the right foot, slowly floating that left foot off the floor, nice and with control. Stretch the paintbrush of your foot all the way back behind you. And then again, we'll step that foot all the way forward and lower the right knee to the mat. Scoop the tailbone under, pull the belly in. Inhale, sweep the arms up, lengthen through the waist. Exhale, hands to the heart, shift halfway forward and then twist to the left, hooking your right elbow across your left knee. Three deep breaths. One, pressing top hand into bottom hand, elbows are wide apart. 
two, and really pressing your left knee against your right elbow at the same time. Three, nice, releasing back to center, hands to the mat, and this time we'll step it all the way forward to the front of the mat. So you can come onto the ball of that back foot, bend the knee if you need to, and step it forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, deep out. Meeting in Utkatasana, the chair pose, bend the knees. Inhale, sweep the arms up to the sky. Coming to standing, exhale, release all the way back. Find your center again. One final round, so this time we'll add on a few more standing postures and foundational poses. So deep bend in the knees, lower down, see if you can touch the floor. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, fold all the way forward, squeezing into your thighs. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen again, stepping, or you could try hopping back, high plank position, and lowering down. Inhale, cobra, or upward facing dog, making sure knees and thighs off the floor for upward dog. Exhale, all the way back to downward facing dog. Ground the left foot, inhale, sweep the right foot up to the sky. Exhale, stepping right foot forward, stay here. This time lower the back heel down, 45 degree angle with the left foot. Press down into the feet to rise up. Inhale, the arms reach high, palms together, lift the gaze to the thumbs. Stay here as you exhale, feel that left hip is externally rotated. So your left toes are turned to the left and your left knee is in that same line as your toes. One more big breath in. Opening up to Virabhadrasana B, as you exhale, spread the arms apart. Take another breath in, lifting up through the spine, and breathing out, relax the shoulders, but keep the hands lifted. So this will set us up for a reversing where we'll simply flip the right palm around. We'll keep the lower body the same, but as you inhale, reach your right arm up and back and pause. Now option here to lift your gaze to your top hand, or you could look down to the floor. Very light pressure, hardly any at all, in the left hand on the outer side of your left leg. One more breath here. Good. Inhale all the way back to center. Side angle posture. We'll place right elbow to rest on the right knee. Reach the left arm forward. Alternatively, you can come to the full expression of the pose. Right hand to the floor and left arm still stretching forward. Let's take one more breath together and a big breath out. Now, if you have the variation with your hand on the floor, we'll come back to elbow on the knee and then everyone left hand on your hip. Just take your back foot, heel toe walk it in slightly, and then place your right fingertips on the floor in front of your right foot. We're setting up for Ardha Chandrasana, and we're gonna fly. So start to shift weight into your right foot as you lift your left heel, and see if you can press into your right leg to float your left leg all the way up. Left leg nice and strong here. Reach your left arm up to the sky, and only if you're comfortable, you can start to incrementally shift your gaze to the left, and maybe to that top hand. A little bit of a test for the balance here. Either way, try to really feel that you spread your body in every direction possible here. <laughs> All right, let's start to release it. Bending the right knee with control, finding warrior two again, maybe place that left hand on the hip so you can control everything and find warrior two. Good, last reverse. Right palm flips around, just one breath. Inhale, reach up and back. Exhale, circling hands to the mat, step back, fine plank position. Take a breath in, strong through core and shoulders. Exhale, chaturanga or knees to the ground. Inhale, slow motion into your cobra or your upward dog, back ribs lifting. Exhale, all the way back to your downward facing dog. Left leg starts to float up to the sky, big inhale. Exhale, step forward, take a moment to lower the back heel, warrior one, via Bhadrasana May. Inhale, arms rise up, pause, hands together, lifting the gaze to the thumbs and keeping that nice external rotation through your back leg. Take one more breath in as you reach tall and exhale, opening up warrior two or what we call via Bhadrasana B. Take a long breath in as you spread across the heart, opening up the chest. And big breath out, sinking into that centeredness in your hips. One more big breath in. And breathing out, calm, steady mind. 
Good, reversing the work. Flip left palm over, inhale, reach up and back. Again, pause here, three breaths. Very light pressure on that back leg. Try to open up through the left side body. Good, one more breath. Nice, inhale all the way to center side angle, left elbow to the knee, right arm forward, or alternatively, again, you could go a little deeper into the hips, left hand to the ground. Your option here, try to scoop the tailbone under, belly and ribs in, strong through the legs. Now, if your hand is all the way on the ground, let's pop it back up right hand to the hip. We'll heel toe, walk the back foot a little bit forward, shifting the gaze in front of the left foot, just placing your fingertips down. Now all you're doing is lifting your back heel, shifting the weight into that left leg carefully, and then rising up, half moon, Ardha Chandrasana, right arm reaches up to the sky. Keep that leg that's in the air electrified, nice and strong, flexing the toes back towards you. Again, if you're comfortable, you start to lift the gaze towards that top hand, a little bit tricky. One more big deep breath. Beautiful, and then nice and slow, we'll bend that standing leg, hand to the hip, and try and step it back into our warrior two position. And then flip the left palm, inhale, reach up and back. And all the way back to plank position, we'll meet there. Take a nice big breath when you arrive, pull the belly and the ribs in. Exhale, chaturanga or knees to the ground. Inhale, cobra or upward dog, long spine. Exhale, downward facing dog, pause. Take a slow breath in, a deep breath out. Now, we're going to stay here for a moment to come into a twist, but I want you to walk your feet a couple inches forward. So see if you can find a position where you can flatten your heels pretty well to the ground. It's going to depend on your body proportions. And we'll take our right hand across to the left ankle or the left calf and start to turn the gaze underneath that left arm. So a little twist through the spine. Try and find stability. The belly and the ribs pull in. And the right shoulder is coming across under the body. One more deep breath. And then exhale, release that right hand back to the earth. Second side, left hand reaches for the right leg. We start to turn the gaze under the right arm. Keep the hips reaching high to the sky. And the right hand really firmly anchoring down. One more big breath in. Big breath out. I'll slowly come back to downward dog position, pause. And then coming onto the toes, lower both knees to the mat. And just bring the feet and the knees together. And we'll sit back for a moment with the toes tucked under, one hand resting on top of the other hand. Sitting with a tall spine, close the eyes. Letting the mind settle. Let some of the effort of the practice subside. And from here, we'll go ahead and make our way down to our bum. So let's just release our toes back, we'll come and sit down, and find Dandasana, or staff position. So both legs just nice and straight behind us. If you're newer to this pose, it might be helpful to start just by bringing yourself onto the fingertips slightly behind the hips, and then draw the elbows back, open the chest, lift the spine and the ribs up. Alternatively, you can place the hands flat on the floor, just next to the hips. And start to engage and electrify the legs. One more big breath in, belly and ribs draw in and lift up. Breath out. Okay, coming into Paschimottanasana. So what you reach for will depend on your flexibility. Some of you, as beginners, I recommend reaching for ankles or shins. If you have a little more length through the back of the legs, you can take the big toes. And we'll inhale, find a little more openness, open the chest, and exhale, hollow the belly, keep the thighs strong and slowly folding forward. Just keep the chin slightly lifted, but lengthen through the back of the neck. Let your gaze land somewhere on your feet or up your shins. Don't worry about it if you're not folded as deeply as me. So you'd be better to just keep your spine relatively straight and just edging your hands forward as best you can over time, rather than compromising everything and rounding your back. So keep everything long. Last big breath. Stay for the breath out. 
inhaling, slowly releasing, coming all the way up. We're gonna just come into a nice easy twist. So we'll take our right foot, cross it across the outside of the left knee. Right hand behind us with the fingers back and then use that hand to help you shift your weight to the front edges of the sitting bones so your lower back is more perpendicular to the floor. Beginner style, we just hook our left elbow, the crease of the elbow on the knee and revolve to the right. Second alternative is to lengthen out of the left side of the waist and hook your elbow outside the knee. So either variation and then you can place your hands in yana mudra or sometimes we call it chin mudra, thumb and forefinger touch. An important thing here is to really keep your spine, your chest lifted. Okay, let's slowly release, swapping the sides. Using that left hand behind you to really guide the lower back more perpendicular to the floor and then peeling the chest open. In that second variation, you lengthen out of the right side of the waist, hook the elbow. So either way. Deep breaths. And slowly release. Okay, let's bring ourselves slightly forward just so we have space behind us to lie down. Nice straight legs, quads contracted, reach the arms. Take a breath in, lift the heart. And as you exhale, rounding the back, scoop the tailbone under chin to chest. And we slowly roll down, just one vertebra at a time. We're going to set up for bridge posture. So let's just bend the knees, place the feet flat on the ground, feet about hip width apart, and feet nice and parallel. And inhaling, lift the hips up off the floor. And you can either keep it here, keeping the chest lifted, the upper back broad, or if you want to go a little deeper with me, try and interlock your hands and just shuffle those shoulders together one at a time. See if you can really lift and open the heart. Keep a feeling that the core muscles are still active. So the lower belly gently hugging in, knees parallel so the inner thighs have some energy. And then you're just continuing to lift the hips up. Last big breath. And then relaxing the arms out to the side wide in your upper back before coming down. And then just super slowly with control. We'll come all the way down. Good. Let's bring the knees and feet together. Scoop the tailbone under, pull the navel to the spine. Feel that you use your core as you lift your knees up to your chest and just wrap your arms around your legs. Give yourself a little hug, maybe a bit of a rock right to left. And we're gonna do one final spine twist. So we'll set up for that by keeping our right knee close. Just interlace both of your hands around your right knee and go ahead and just straighten your left leg along the ground. Squeeze your right knee in towards your chest just slightly. And now setting up for the twist, left hand to the outer right knee. We'll stretch the right arm out to the right and take the knee across your body. Turning your gaze down the right arm. Now your knee, your right knee probably will not make it to the ground here, which is fine. Try and focus on keeping that right shoulder grounded instead. And just closing the eyes once you're set there. Try and relax the left hand that's helping there to support where the right knee is. Beautiful, let's inhale all the way back up. We'll keep that right knee bent, bring the left knee up to meet it, give it another little squeeze. And then swapping sides, interlace your fingers along your left knee, straighten the right leg on the floor. Just stay here for a moment as you squeeze the left knee into the chest slightly. And then right hand to the outside of the left knee. Let's go ahead and take that knee across the body, extending the left arm and really keeping that left shoulder grounded today. Three deep breaths. Again, you can look your gaze down the left arm or you could just keep it neutral. It's up to you. Two more. And really relaxing in this position, allowing your back to open up and release. Last breath. Very nice. Let's come all the way back to center. Just pause, placing the feet on the ground, bending up both knees, and we'll just adjust our hips into the center. Last little thing, again, knees and feet together. Pull the tailbone under, pull the belly button to the spine. Use that activation to lift your knees. And now float your arms right in close to your legs. So you're like a little tuck diver position. And see if you can lift your head and shoulders off the ground, bringing the knees up towards the forehead and the forehead to the knees. Holding here nice and tight. Take a big, big breath. Feel like you're really getting all the energy out. 
And now on your exhale, find your way to final Shavasana. So just relaxing one leg at a time. Let them straighten out. Relax your arms. Do a little wiggle with your shoulders, with your upper back to really soften. And then close down the eyes. So I'll talk you through just a couple minutes of a relaxation. But feel very welcome to stay longer in your Shavasana if you like today. You can just pause the video. Stay as long as you like. But the first focus I'd like you to bring in is just be, be present in your position. Let yourself come into some stillness now. And notice just by becoming present and finding some stillness, you already start to relax. You're already starting to shed some layers of tension. Just letting the hands drop into the belly. Take a nice big breath into the belly. Big breath out, connecting into your center again. And then perhaps a little stretch. We can interlace the fingers. Just lengthen the arms over the head. Stretch out through the toes. And we'll slowly bend our knees. Roll over to the right side and just pause for a moment using your right arm to support your right ear. When you're ready, going ahead to bring yourself all the way up to find a seat. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining me. Namaste.